of intellectual property rights infringement. So one of the big factors damaging China's reputation as it tries to gain more say on global issues. For number some analysis now, we're joined by a UK advertising guru who has won almost every industry award there is. Right now, Ligus Delaney chairman Tim Delaney is focusing on working directly with Chinese companies, helping them to represent them globally, and he joins us now from Hong Kong. Tim Delaney, really good to see you, and welcome to the programme. Selling Chinese-made goods is one thing. But do you have the added problem of having to sell the company as well? Is the Made in China tag something of an obstacle still? Um, it doesn't have to be. I think that uh, there are many companies in China that are um, highly dynamic. They've gone through the Chinese market. They want to go out from China. And I think wor what they do need is uh, advice on branding because they've been able to take advantage of the growth in China without branding. They've just gone via distribution and via the, the dynamism in the economy. So I think that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, made in China can be a good thing. And I think it's the brand issues that uh, are at the forefront. And how does your strategy for your mainland Chinese clients differ from the strategy that you would perhaps employ for more established markets, maybe in Europe or indeed the rest of Asia, notably Japan? Well, I think um, for China, uh, many of the brands are going to be unknown, and therefore you're launching a company and a brand into a market which is pretty mature. And therefore, th the most important thing you want to do is some, find some way of, of introducing them into the fabric of, of uh, let's say, if it's Europe, a European sensibility. But people are still intrigued by China, and I think there's a lot of room for Chinese brands to make inroads into the European and uh, US markets. And brands across the board, what sort of uh, brands and what sort of products are you actually working with? We're working with a number of, we, we're working with our own uh, roster of clients um, into China and then we're looking at various categories um, within China. I would, I would suggest that almost any category within China has the possibility of making it in other markets. Yes, it's going to be tough in Europe, there are mature markets, but as I said, I think people are intrigued by China and um, uh, interested enough to essentially at least give them a chance and I think the branding issue there where they haven't had experience of branding and this is where we can bring some assistance to these brands to help them um, be introduced in the right way to th these rather difficult and uh, frankly oversupplied markets. It's eight months until the Olympic Games open here in London. Of course, Beijing hosted the last lot. How are you trying to leverage the games as far as your clients are concerned? It's pretty sewn up. I mean, most of the, most of the big brands are partners with the Olympics and, the, and uh, events like um, the World Cup over a period of uh, decades. I think most people see the Olympics as a catalyst for um, essentially the audience. And you have billions of people tuning in. And it really depends on whether the company wants to join in with that uh, um, event and either become a partner, as I said, over a period of time, or essentially um, get involved in guerrilla marketing. My own view is that Brands that take a long-term view will benefit from big events like the Olympics. And then I think from a, from a slightly different perspective, younger brands and youth brands can be more guerrilla oriented and, and go after the youth market in that way. Now, what about the other way around, about established brands actually selling in China themselves? Are you getting a feeling that the, the big companies, they're getting weary that they're not getting the sort of penetration that they're used to in, say, Europe and the United States? And actually, China could be a huge untapped market. Is it difficult to break in? It's, it's, it's going to be difficult, but I think that the most important thing is that people who play the long game um, will definitely win in China. And I think that it's important that brands that enter the Chinese market enter as the brand that they are outside the Chinese market. And then when they go in and they're consistent, the Chinese consumer will become more and more sophisticated. They will go online, they'll look at how consistent these brands are, how true they are to themselves, and those are the brands that, that will succeed in China. Really interesting to talk to you, Ligus Delaney Chairman and Creative Director Tim Delaney. I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as the saying goes, diamonds are forever. And one luxury jeweler is hoping to add a little bit more sparkle to the share sale in Hong Kong. You'll hear from the boss of Graf Diamonds next. You do not need to spend a thousand.